Hello and welcome to Japandi in 12 hours. Today we are tackling the den slash study. Now this was one of the first rooms that I completed when we moved in about a year ago. Reason being is these two large items, the piano and the desk. Uh, especially the piano, this is a family heirloom. It is about a hundred years old and I would not want myself to move it, but instead professionals to do so. Um, so with a music space and a study space, I want what is on the wall to reflect it. So I'm wanting to move my degrees to the desk, kind of have that be an academic nook, and then have this nook here to be more creative, more artsy. So um, I'm going to be putting more art on the wall and for the entirety of the space to organize it better. Um, it's kind of messy, I hate to admit. There's books all over the place, some books that I don't use so much right now, and um, there's this space just does not make sense to me. Yes, it's being used, but it's not being used fully. So we're gonna clear things out and put things in. And hopefully by the end, we'll have a space that makes a lot more sense and looks even better. When it comes to organizing and designing a space, the first thing I do is to remove any clutter. That's anything that's lying around. You can keep the larger items. I don't count that as clutter. I count those as fundamental parts of the structure of the room. I suppose you can call me a chest man. I really like chests because you can store so much in there and it's not clutter because it's all put away. And if you have a chest that's thematic, it makes so much sense with organization. But here, let me show you. Okay, it's finally taken some time, but I have cleared out this top shelf. So the idea is I want the space to be more so empty and I have moved everything either into my storage, which is my uh, music scores, academic records, uh, fiction and nonfiction, and then music nonfiction. And then in the bottom here, I put some items of sentimental and or monetary value, some old books and some books that have been given to me or made by friends and whatnot. And here are all the books that I've said that I would read, but haven't come to that yet. So hopefully by having it out, I will actually complete my readings. I put my partner's documents here. And then there, these are just items that I'm just going to donate. Um, I've also like recycled a whole bunch of papers and stuff as well. So I was really happy. I was very excited. I was happy that it was more or less done, but then this happened or didn't happen, I'm not able to close this. So, back to start. All right, this little study academic area is coming along. However, one issue, the electrical outlet that I was using to plug in the lamp, the printer, the uh, my computer cords, as well as the internet was this one. So I'm going to have to, that one's now, not usable because that's my reading nook. So I'm gonna to have to use this one here. So I'm gonna just use a power bar with command hanging picture strips. I'm using it for the cord, for my degrees, as well as pictures. So, so far I'm happy with this wall, except for this little area here. Um, electrical boxes often aren't the most lovely item on the wall, so I want to cover it. So I'm just looking at the options I have for artwork and I've decided on using this one here. Um, it is a mid-century print, well, copy by um, Sikar Hansen, who was a uh, Danish artist who did a lot of like advertisement paintings. But um, I found this at a thrift store and I just loved it because it kind of fall, fell into this one that I had here. So I'm gonna pair those two, and this one that my friend did for me, um, they kind of both have a similar idea of uh, a female motherly image mixed in with a level of abstract. 
Uh, the top one there was done by uh, someone I went to school with, and it's done with pointillism. So there's actually a lot to, as, as a grouping, this makes me very happy because I can just stand back and observe it and have my guests observe it and get an interpretation from that. As I see these pictures come to place, it makes me feel really happy because what it does is extends the eye down the whole length of the wall, make the space feel even larger. All right, it was taking me a while to realize what should go up on this wall by the piano, above the piano. Um, originally, I was thinking a combination of these paintings. However, it just didn't look right. They were a bit too ostentatious and didn't really tie in the view nor the other pieces here. So uh, I decided to use two photos that I took, one of Vancouver Island and the one above uh, when I was in Japan of Mount Fuji in the distance. I really like these two. They complement each other because uh, they use have the same like kind of blues, similar uh, uh, shadowed greens. Uh, one's in the mountain and one's on the beach, so it's a nice contrast. And it's also just a nice contrast with the little view that I'll have when I sit down here. So I'll have the art up here, the view there. If you remember some of my earlier videos, I talked about the amount of space you should keep free. I said a third of the space. I would say I've done more than a third, maybe about half the amount of space in this closet is not taken up. So here and here. And as you can see, just by ducking down, I can see everything that I have stored here. Nothing is in the way nothing's being impeded. That way, everything is easy and quick to access. You're not wasting time. Just grab and go. All right, the time is around four. I started around 10. Sure, let's say 10. So that took about six hours. Uh, it was a lot quicker this time because I didn't have to go out and get anything. If anything, this is an example of editing and organizing, including what I put up on the wall. So let me bring you to the new improved study. The first thing that greets me when I come in is a piece of Japanese Canadian art slash poetry. It helps remind me why I'm doing these projects. Then here is the music area with the piano, shamisen, ukulele, and also my practice katana. Um, I'm really happy with how the colors are matching with the blues, reds, and the little bits of green on the side. Everything came around quite well. The only issue I have is on that far corner. Um, I'm not really sure what to put there yet, but eventually something will go there. And here we have some of the First Nation art um, here, as well as a sword that my partner has for some reason. <laughs> Handing across the room, we are greeted by the view to a little reading nook where I have some of my stained glass items. That stained glass uh, bird there is made by my great aunt and beside it is from um, Studio Ghibli when I was in Japan. And up at the top is a piece of art my friend made and it has two whales signifying myself and my partner. One reason why I wanted this nook was to have an area to practice shamisen to sit down and look out out of the view. So this serves that purpose very well. On the other side of the room, we have my motherly corner with three art pieces. I didn't think that these would all match. I was just collecting them and then I ended up having a theme. So that worked great. And also what works great is hanging this on one of the screws. It covers up the electric box and I don't have to make another hole. And actually I did that also on the other side with this First Nations carving. I'm just using one of the screws that's in place so I get to cover up the electric lit and not make any more holes. Finally, a last little bit of organizing that I did that took place here in the desk. So 
as I was just mentioning, it's very important to be able to look into like look into storage and immediately know where it is. It's less frustration, you save time, it's less stress. So the center one is where we're putting the electronics. Um, down at the bottom, I don't know if you can see it. Yes, it's much messier down here, uh, but I put a paracord and uh, staple, not stapled it, I adhered it to the, temporary adhered it to the lower part of the desk. And that way the cords come up here, that way there's less cords. Actually, there's hardly any cords up on the desk, which is very nice. Now looking in here, this is where I keep the pens and whatnot, uh, this, um, the utensils, I guess you can say. And um, I took our uh, kitchen utility drawer organizer and put it in here because I got a new one for the kitchen and I'll show that on another time. I did the same for down here. This is where I keep all my cards and stationery. Um, I really like using these um, utensil holders just because you get to put things up vertically. When things are flat, it takes a lot longer to find an item and you can also end up damaging it. So this way, it's just a lot easier. Everything's quick to access. And then here, this is kind of our technology cords and whatnot. And finally, this is just my partner's medical information. And then we just have some files in there, so. That last little bit, not so interesting, but I hope you enjoyed this Japandi in 12 hours. I like to call this Japandi of organization. Cause when you have, when you're able to get rid of your stuff, when you're able to clear more space, everything feels not just more clean, but also more luxurious. Anyways, I hope you're having a great day and I hope so you found some of these tips helpful. Bye.